Hey guys, I'm Matt Pittman of Meat Church. Welcome to my outdoor kitchen and another episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. Well, this is a game day special all about tailgating and Traeger game day that I'm sure that you guys are all celebrating right now. Uh, and I'm really excited to be back. It's been a minute since I've been with you guys, uh, but I'm excited about this one because tailgating is one of the main reasons why I got into outdoor cooking. Uh, if you follow us on our YouTube channel, um, I often talk about that I've had season tickets with the Cowboys for over 20 years, and I kind of got thrown to the fire, so to speak, uh, when it comes uh, to outdoor cooking at a young age. But a little bit about us and what we're doing tonight. So I'm the founder and pit master at Meat Church Barbecue here in Waxahachie, Texas. If you're a Traeger fan, you probably know who we are, but if you don't, um, please look us up on Instagram uh, and YouTube, where we drop weekly cooking videos. Amazing partnership with Traeger, uh, and they give us the opportunity uh, to come to you guys live uh, from our home in our backyard and share with you some recipes uh, that we love. So got a lot of cool stuff planned tonight. Um, we're going to be using a lot of Traeger products, a little bit of Meat Church products that we're really excited about. And everything we're making is super delicious, very easy. Uh, I think this is stuff that you guys will go replicate uh, in your homes or at your tailgates, wherever you're uh, celebrating game day this weekend. So whether it's high school football tomorrow or college football Saturday or pro football uh, Sunday, Monday, or Thursday now, I guess, all this stuff is going to be really easy, stuff you can make at home and take to the stadium or stuff you can make in the parking lot. Uh, so we're really, really excited about it. So if you're not familiar with Traeger Game Day, it's a pretty cool concept that goes on during football season. There's lots of activities around it. But on social media, if you uh, use the hashtag Traeger Game Day or even search by it, you can kind of see what everybody's got going on. There's a weekly challenge where two dishes or meats or whatever you want to call it are pitted against uh, one another in a vote, and then the winning vote is kind of what everyone cooks for that weekend. And so this week's challenge, um, hamburgers won, and so you'll see tons of hamburgers on social media this week, so I encourage you to go out and make the ultimate burger uh, for your Traeger game day. Uh, post it on social media. There's all sorts of prizes that come up often, so obviously you're already following Traeger, but I encourage you to go look at that hashtag and see what everybody's got going on. It's always fun to click on the hashtag and kind of see what everybody's cooking at different games. No matter who your team is, um, you know, I'm here in Texas, I'm a huge Cowboys fan, and if you know much about the Cowboys, you know it's been a pretty sad state of affairs for the last 20 years. So I like to say it's got to be about the tailgating. We win in the parking lot, and then whatever happens in the stadium is bonus. So um, let's have a good time with our food in the parking lot and, and go from there. So what are we doing today? We've got a packed menu. Um, we're gonna be here for an hour cooking together. Some of this stuff is, uh, is already cooked, some of it's still cooking, but it's all gonna finish in this hour. I'm gonna tell you how we prepared it, how we cooked it, and then I'm gonna go in and eat it. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get to eat what comes out on this cutting board today, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna go make this stuff and, uh, and try it for yourself. So the menu is pulled pork, big time American classic. It's what I grew up on. Um, some people think it's simple, but I'm going to show you some twists and things that can really elevate it to the next level. Um, we're going to make an amazing Traeger game day dip, which is loaded with like a bunch of different kinds of cheeses and stuff. And anytime you smoke cheese on a Traeger, you know it's going to be awesome. And then lastly, we're going to do pig shots, something I've been cooking for a number of years. It's a great appetizer, uh, really good tailgating snack. I like to prep it at night, take it to the stadium, cook it there so these are really good um, they've also got a lot of cheese and cream cheese in them as well so uh, lots of meat lots of cheese lots of bacon a day um, and then let's talk about kind of what we're going to be using so for our pulled pork we're going to be using Traeger's sweet and heat sauce at the end um, on our creations today we're going to be using meat church honey hog this is uh, one of the first two rubs I ever came out with in 2014 I was on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, and this is one of the two rubs I took on the show um, where the judges all said we had best taste, and Myron, Mo, and Tuffy all wanted to take this rub home, so uh, we're pretty proud of it. It's really great all-purpose uh, with a little honey powder in it, so it's got a natural sweetness added, but it's great on barbecue and great in everything that we're doing today. And I'm really stoked uh, to be using the Meat Church Limited Edition Hardwood Blend Pellet by Traeger that just came out uh, just under two weeks ago, or just about two weeks ago. This thing has been like all the rage on social media. Um, I'll talk about it more when we get to the cook, but it's really a story of my life in barbecue. I was born in the South, raised on pork that was cooked with hickory. I moved to Texas as a teenager, and if you don't know, everything in Texas is generally cooked with post oak, 
there are some other variations, but by and large, uh, post oak is the oak that is the wood that we cook with here in Texas. And so this is the perfect blend of that, in my opinion. It's a super cool bag uh, with the colors patterned after our Holy Gospel rub. It's got stained glass on it. It's a new, brand new, heavy duty resealable bag. Uh, it's only available limited edition, so you can get it at TraegerGrills.com or any Traeger dealer that's brought it in, which it's all over the place, and it's been kind of hard to find, so we're excited about the response with it. But I'm cooking everything today with it. I'm actually cooking everything, I, period. It's uh, heavier smoke wood with uh, hickory and oak, but we're cooking everything we cook with it right now, like I said. So let's jump in to the action. So we're going to start out with pulled pork. We're surrounded by a lot of football memorabilia. I'm pretty excited uh, over here. I... So I used to work for the Cowboys for years and on the visiting side, and I've got like a lot of cool memorabilia that I had to dig out of the archives, but the great Jerry Rice, uh, we've got what looks like a Houston Oilers helmet. It was actually Tennessee Oilers. We've got Steve McNair, Eddie George. We've got John Madden on a Cowboys helmet, Daryl Moose Johnson. Ricky Williams won the Heisman with Texas. And the great Warren Moon on a Seahawks helmet. Um, Roger Staubach back here. So we're kind of surrounded by a bunch of cool football stuff. Um, so excited to get into this. So. Uh, anyway, let's get going. First things first, we're going to do pork. I want to explain all the foil that you guys see tonight. If you didn't know, I swear this is the year of the fly, especially here in this outdoor kitchen. Uh, I mentioned our YouTube videos. We make weekly cooking videos. We drop every Wednesday on the Meat Church YouTube channel, and there's been lots of flies this summer. It is what it is. The flies here are smart. They know the food's good here, so we just deal with them. So I'll leave this stuff covered up as long as I can, and kind of is what it is. It's, it's what you get when you cook outside. All right, pulled pork. You know, I said this spring when we when we made this uh, for a video, I was like, man, I just, sometimes I just overlook it because it's, I, I feel like it's, you know, maybe it's kind of basic, but this is a meat that anybody can cook. Uh, whether you're a beginner and you're afraid to not screw, like you're afraid you're going to screw something up, there's a lot of latitude in this. It's an inexpensive cut of meat. It goes a really long way. Or if you think you're an expert on pork, uh, I'm going to put a couple twists on it. Uh, this is something you can take a lot of different directions. So this is an 11 pound bone in pork butt, uh, not a pork shoulder. It's a pork butt. It doesn't matter if you go bone in or boneless. I like bone in because it holds this nice shape. Uh, the problem with a boneless butt is they normally just kind of fall down. So I, I like the way this cooks a little bit better. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into trimming it. We're not brining it or injecting it or anything like that. We're gonna treat this very simply. We're gonna trim it, we're gonna season it, and we're gonna put it on the Traeger. Um, so let's, let's get into trimming it. They say everything's bigger in Texas. So I just wanna get out my, my new, uh, well, that might be just like a little bit too big. Um, Victor Neck sent me this amazing new knife. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to use it for. I was going to use it on this pork butt, but um, anyway, might be better served uh, for something else. So let's just go a little boning knife here. All I'm going to do to this is take off anything that's kind of sticking out. Anytime I'm on a large cut, I want to get rid of it because it's not going to it's not going to cook right. It's going to kind of burn up. Any excess fat, you don't have to do a whole lot. Some people will just season these and go. Um, so I'm going to start right here on the top where I can kind of pinch this little mohawk because, again, that's not going to it's not going to cook properly. So I'm just going to shave that off. I'm just using a flexible meat church boning knife. I like an inexpensive boning knife to do my trim. So you can see this excess fat that's sticking up here. We're going to kind of take that down. Feel around, see anything sticking off like that. Over here in the money muscle, there's kind of a bit of excess fat. I like to lay my knife flat and just kind of shave it out. Uh, like I said earlier, we have a great YouTube video on this on our YouTube channel. Uh, there's also recipes in the Traeger app or on TraegerGrills.com. So this is stuff you can always follow back up on um, after this. And this broadcast will live as a post on Facebook and also a post on YouTube. Uh, so this this is all going to be out there for a while. I always go back and answer questions after the fact. Now we're going to be answering your questions today. So in the comments, fire away. I've got folks here. They're going to um, that are going to uh, ask me questions as we go on. So feel free to fire away questions. Uh, that's pretty good on the top. I'm going to go over to the bottom side. Sometimes people won't take this off at all. People argue fat is flavor. That's true, but in moderation. And oftentimes when you cook this down, you probably pretty much just kind of remove this. You can keep it if you want because in between this fat 
and the bigger cut of meat is kind of some some bacon some people like to leave that so today I'm just gonna leave this as is and just trim this edge off because I really like the meat underneath here that you can see right here and this fat will protect that so I'm gonna leave it because I can remove this after the cook you could take it down if you want to get a better application of seasoning all over the actual meat to help you build bark so it's kind of your preference but it's real easy to deal with this fat after the cook so I'm gonna leave it again to protect that bottom meat but I'm taking off some excess here okay how many people can I feed with an average size pork butt how many people can you feed with this man this is gonna feed 15 20 people it goes a long way and it's really inexpensive so I highly recommend it for that I'm gonna, you could go with a binder here, by the way, meaning you could slather a yellow mustard on this or something like that to have the seasoning adhere quicker, but it's, it's 90 degrees in Texas. This is plenty sticky enough. I'm just gonna go straight on with the seasoning. And I go pretty liberal with this seasoning uh, because it's really fine. You cannot hurt this big cut of meat. You're not gonna be able to over season it. So I'm just gonna pat it in with my hand. Uh, I'm not gonna make you sit here for all of this, so I'm gonna, thoroughly season this entire thing real quick just kind of kind of pat it again season on all sides a little bit about the anatomy of this uh this pork butt one end which i'll show you in just one second is what is referred to as the money muscle that's that's right here this is tube right here that looks like a tenderloin uh, if you compete in barbecue you know that you need to kind of expose that this will be cutting the medallions and putting a turn-in box they call it the money muscle because that's what you got to turn in to get paid according to Myron Mixon. So uh, when you're pulling pork, remember that's super good right there. The meat around the bone is really good. That bacon I showed you earlier is really good. So when you're going to make your sandwiches, when you're done with this, if that's what you're doing, reserve those pieces for yourself uh, and give your neighbor or friends all the stuff in the middle. But I'm gonna go liberal. I got a lot of choices in the meat church arsenal for this. You could use the gospel, you could use honey bacon, um, you could use holy gospel, uh, but th this, Honey hog is a great all-purpose uh, that is a really good choice. We're going to let that just sit and kind of adhere. So what I would normally tell you, give this at least 15 minutes. If I had all the time in the world, I'd season it the night before and let it ride in the fridge overnight. But give it 15 to 30 minutes if you can. What's going to happen, the uh, salt in this seasoning is going to pull moisture out of the meat so probably difficult for you to see but it's already starting to look wet right here that's exactly what's going on with the temperature outside here in texas this seasoning will adhere pretty quickly and uh this this will be nice and wet as i'll sit here and talk about it for a few minutes and start to let you see that and no doubt we'll start to attract flies here in just a minute but uh this will move pretty quick but give it 15 to 30 minutes if you can this particular cut it won't hurt it if you go way longer than that to be honest with you um, one of the things i say with tailgating prepare early it's the biggest tip i can give don't go out i mean you're obviously not going to go cook an 8 or 10 or 12 hour pork butt in the parking lot but even when we go to these other things i'm going to show you today my number one tip for tailgating is prep the night before do everything you can you know not only prep your tubs and your yetis um which by the way when you're taking a yeti to a stadium, completely fill it up, whether it be with cold or if you're hot holding, the more full it is, the more effective it is. Prep all that stuff the night before. Do all this trim, do all this seasoning. Um, there's nothing worse than getting out in the parking lot and having this big mess uh, when you don't have a sink and all that. So do as much as you can the night before, um, show up early and your life will be a heck of a lot easier. But as y'all can see, this is already starting to get like really wet as I show y'all that. Uh, it's quite wet already and it'll, it'll, it'll happen pretty quickly and we'll be we'll be good to go but let's talk about how we've how we actually cook this while this is adhering and i'll move on to the next stage so i already mentioned that we're running with the meat church pellet blend which is a perfect blend for this with that hickory and oak in it that's all i've got running here right now we're running at 275 degrees um, there's a lot of latitude in cooking a piece of meat like this 275 isn't necessarily the perfect number i'd be okay if you went down to 225 or if you're in a hurry, you can go as high as 325. I like to go low enough to get enough smoke, build enough bark, but quick enough to get, you know, basically be able to get done as quick as I can without sacrificing any quality. So if you wanna cook a little lower and get a little smoke on it, then drop the temperature down. 275 is a number that I choose to get done basically as quick as I can um, without sacrificing any quality. So adjust the temperature. If you 
cook lower, then add your cook time. Get your fancy Casio calculator watch and do some computations, but I'll tell you that this 10 pound, our first fly customer, this 10 pound, 10, 11 pound pork butt will take about eight hours at 275. So if you drop down lower, budget a little bit longer, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So again, we're running 275, and this cook process was really a two-part process. We, um, we cooked this for about six hours at 275 before we wrapped it, and I'm gonna show you what to look for at the wrap stage here in just a moment. Actually, I'll do that now. After I get a drink. <laughs> um, what I'm drinking, rosé, because I'm a little bit fancy. Mixed it up on y'all today. So, like I said, two-step process. The first step, I'm putting this on the Traeger, on the grate, just naked like this, nothing around it. It could go in a pan if you want, uh, but I just cook it just like this, and it was about six hours. But you're looking for a couple things. So as you can see, this thing is like really getting wet. It's really pretty bright red. The honey hog has a great color. The gospel even has an even brighter red color. This is gonna start to turn mahogany. And then at some point, you know, if you never wrapped it, it would almost go black. And I wanna wrap just before it goes black. So I wanna build a beautiful bark. Basically, I want it to visually look right for me. Then I'm gonna wrap it. You wrap for two reasons. Um, you wrap to protect the color and you wrap for moisture and putting things, you know, in that wrap. So with an instant read thermometer, this is probably looking 165, maybe even 170 internal temperature before you wrap it. And depending on the size, probably somewhere around the six hour mark. So let me show you, um, let me kind of move this one over. And I'm just gonna show you one that's been cooking. Let me grab another board here. I got lots of rosewood blocks, so I can use different ones to show you what we got going on. All right, this, this pork uh, butt right here has been on for about six hours. And you can see that, you know, the money muscle is starting to get pretty dark, but this is, this is what I would call mahogany. It's got great bark when you feel the texture. Uh, it's taken on great smoke, and this is th this is time to wrap. Um, this one has is is take has taken on enough smoke. Let me look at it. I mean, it it looks so good already. Um, feels really good. But again, you know, pull your head out of the recipe. I always tell folks, take a look, cook with your eyes and cook with your heart. And when you look at that, you're like, all right, that is a great color. I'm ready to wrap that. You 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 want to stop it from turning like out here on the edges. It's turning a little black but everywhere else it's you know nice and red so we don't want to overcook it and then what i like to do is i wrap my pork butts in a pan uh, you could also do this in just heavy duty aluminum foil but i personally like a pan because the second stage of the cook from the wrap on uh, this this pork butt is going to render so much fat in it and it's all going to come out of it uh, and this pan will capture all that jus that comes out of it and that'll help keep your grill clean um, You know, you could see here when I was cooking I actually had a pan underneath it And this is what's kicked out of that In the first six hours now that pans not necessary But I always say this any chance I get to keep my Traeger clean and not let the grease run down into the into the grease tray That's a win. So that's why I do that But there's so much fat in a pork butt that it's really hard to screw up. But now once we wrap this from 165 on to the complete temperature, which will be just over 200, a ton is gonna come out of this. So here's a couple things I like to do to kick up the flavor a little bit. I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little brown sugar and I'm just gonna, just a handful, and I'm put over the top. Now one thing I love to do, and I'm not doing this today, is I love to sprinkle my honey hog hot, or it's honey jalapeno. I love to, I love to sprinkle that at this stage. Uh, I'm not doing that tonight, but that's a, that's a winner. That's what's in our last video that we did on the Meat Church YouTube channel. But I'm gonna take a stick of butter, and I'm gonna cut it lengthwise into three strips.
just the meat church chef knife. And I'm going to put that in my wrap. So I'm going to grab a piece of, I'm going to steal some foil from over here from my next trick. And listen, if you're afraid of this brown sugar and honey, I got a famous saying, I ain't here to help you lose weight, I'm here to help you enjoy life. So I'm gonna cut some, this foil's a little bit long. Oh, forgot one thing. I'm gonna add a little moisture to this, and this is not required, but it's optional. This is pineapple orange guava juice. I like to put a little bit of juice in my pork. You could pour this on it if it's looking dry. I'm gonna put that on the crispy edge bits. Just a little bit. You could use whatever juice you want. Uh, you could use apple juice, whatever. So I like a good fruit, fruit juice. This is again, pineapple orange guava. Just put a little bit in there. I like a nice fruity compliment to my pork. I'm going to wrap it up, and in we go. So we're back in the Traeger 275, and now that it's wrapped in foil, it's going to cook much quicker, and it's probably only going to take about two hours, maybe three, to finish it. What you're going to be looking for with an instant read thermometer, you're, um, you can actually use the leave-in uh, thermometer that's on your Traeger and you can just run it right through the middle of that foil in the heart of the pork butt and look for it to be getting you know check yourself around 195 degrees but you're cooking it till it's probe tender which is normally just north of 200 degrees and then it's going to be time to pull it off and rest it you want to rest it for at least an hour um, I just use the leave-in thermometer as like a directional check and then I'll use a thermopin uh, instant read thermometer for like my you know real check to make sure I want to feel it. I want to actually stick that probe into the pork butt and uh, and make sure that it's probe tender. And when it's probe tender, you pull it out. Um, I actually rest them in a in a in a dry cooler um, with the lid open or the lid cracked with the like. If it's a Yeti, the latch is underneath just so they can vent it and not continue to cook. Um, I would open up the foil and I'll show you this here in just a little bit at the end. But we're gonna pull a completed pork butt out, open up the foil, let the steam run off of it so that the cook process stops. Um, and then after the steam's run off for 10 minutes, close it up, put it in that Yeti with the latches flipped underneath so that it's not locked down tight so that it can breathe a little bit. Uh, and again, that will be what, what stops the cook process. If you needed to hold that pork butt for a long time, a great idea is to cook uh, on your Traeger overnight. If you're going to a game like a noon kickoff, then in the morning, um, you can pull that pork off. You can put it in a Yeti. Uh, and you actually could lock it down tight. You could put blankets on it if you want, if you need to hold it longer, but a big cut like this will hold for four, five, six hours safely. So uh, Yetis are great for hot holding your meat. So I wanna show you now this, um, look at this pork butt now. It's been sitting out 15 minutes. It's completely soaking wet. Uh, this would be ready to cook now. So um, this is exactly what that one looked like when I put it on earlier. Uh, so you can see the beautiful color from the honey hog. It's got an amazing taste, and so uh, I know you guys will dig this one for sure. All right, let's get rid of that one. On to the next. Do you have any questions? You do. do you inject when you're cooking at home or only for competition? Question is, do I inject when cooking at home or only for competition? I do not inject at home. Meat Church sells a pork injection, so I'm not mad if you try it. Uh, but generally speaking, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, we only inject in competition. Um, there's so much intramuscular fat in a pork butt that you don't have to have it. But I'll explain the injection. Injections do a couple things. They impart moisture and they can impart flavor depending on what you're doing. So our pork injection um, has stuff in it to, to impart moisture, but it also has a big pork flavor. So you are gonna pack a little more flavor in it. I think what I tell most people, um, if I was a sales guy, I'd be like, yeah, you should, you should do it. But the fact of the matter is you don't have to do it all the time. I think it's cool to try it, same as a brisket. Like, give it a shot, see if you like it. But if I'm making these at home for the family, stuff like that, I don't, um, I don't generally inject them. I did not inject this one. Do you spritz? Do I spritz? Great question. So I use a hog sprayer. 
um, that you could get at any like farm and ranch store uh, or meat church barbecue supply and it puts off like a really fine spray and I will spritz when something looks dry. So Traegers retain moisture really well so I don't think you have to spritz much and the more you spritz the more it slows down bark formation um, but people are known to spritz with everything from water to Dr. Pepper and Coke. Um, I use I use a 50-50 mix of cider vinegar and water to do my spritzing and I probably will spritz one maybe two times in the first phase of the cook only if it looks dry so with this one I spritzed it one time can you use butcher paper instead of foil you can um, butcher paper is used on beef because beef is more about building that bark and the butcher paper is permeable so uh, foil steams the meat you're gonna see when we pull this completed one out the bark is gonna look kind of wet and that's okay but a lot of people want to keep that bark intact most people don't wrap pork butts with butcher paper but you certainly can um, when you wrap it in butcher paper a ton of that fat's going to render and the jus that's going to come out of it is going to come out the bottom so i'd throw a pan underneath it like i've got set up here or be prepared to really watch your drip tray and your trigger because a bunch of fat's going to come out of it but you you can definitely do that are there any tips that you have uh, for picking a good pork butt? any tips for picking a good pork butt i always look for marbling red is good when it comes to pork um, but honestly, uh, if you're a competition guy, you're used to going in looking for a fat money muscle on the side with all that marbling in it. If you ever go into a, a grocery store and see someone eyeing all the pork butts and looking at the side, they're probably looking for a big money muscle. But for me, I'm looking for a good quality cut, so I'm looking um, to use brands that I use. Like I love Prairie Fresh Pork um, or Farmlands, the same company. Uh, there's other reputable brands out there. So usually with pork, cooking a commodity pork is okay. So like to compare that to beef, when you go to buy beef, you're going to buy a select, choice, or prime grade generally, or maybe Wagyu. Uh, with pork, you're generally buying commodity pork, unless you're competing, in which case guys are buying heritage breed pigs like Berkshire, um, Duroc, things like that. You don't normally find that in the grocery store unless it's kind of a specialty store. Um, I don't think that's needed for pulled pork, to be honest with you. I wouldn't go spend, I mean, I'd eat it. But if you're going out to make great pulled pork, you don't have to buy a heritage breed pig for that. I mean, it's one of the more forgiving, inexpensive cuts, so I'd, I'd enjoy that. All right, we're going to move on to the next. Um, let's do our pig shots. Sorry about all the foil noise, but such is life. Um, let's see here. I need another little bowl. Don, you need another bowl? Little, that'll work, that'll work. Let me grab another bowl to mix this in. So pig shots, really easy to make. Um, people love this stuff. So, you know, this is something that I would make if I, if I were you guys. Um, and whether it be tailgating or something you just make at home, really, really easy, uh, something I love. So the recipe, uh, you can get it in the Traeger app, TraegerGirls.com. Uh, you can get it on uh, MeatChurch.com as well. It's very simple. It's one block of cream cheese. Um, I use a small can of diced chilies or jalapenos. You can also use fresh, which if you're on the Traeger site, they're actually dicing fresh chilies. Um, a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of seasoning. Uh, you mix that together on oh, a little bit of cheddar cheese you mix all that together and we're going to make little cups on a piece of sausage with bacon and it's going to be fantastic so let's start out first by making our mixture one block of cream cheese um, if you've if you've been on the internet in the past month you've seen this insane craze to make smoked cream cheese and uh, i'm all about it I'm not gonna lie uh, we made a video on it in the meat church youtube channel a couple weeks ago and completely shocked me that the video blew up um, but smoked cream cheese will change your life. So I took a block of cream cheese and I sprinkled it with our honey hog and I put it on the Traeger for two, two hours at 225 and this is what it looked like. I didn't score it or anything, I just seasoned it and you can see it kind of kind of popped open. Um, we let it sit and kind of cool off here. So you can use a regular block of cream cheese, you don't have to use uh, smoked cream cheese. but. I have lots of recipes with bacon and cream cheese right now for my tailgate series on my YouTube, and uh, it's hard to beat this uh, smoked cream cheese. I mean, this this stuff right here is addictive. 
So then I use a small can of green chilies or jalapenos. This was a large can, so I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna use all of this. I'm gonna use a cup of cheddar. A little bit of chili powder. We're gonna mix this up. I would, um, I would at least soften the cream cheese or warm it up. This is gonna take me a minute. I've, I kind of let the cream cheese cool a little, little much after smoking it. So let me, let me get this all melded together. Uh, if you want to add some seasoning, I, I like a little seasoning in my cream cheese. So I usually use the honey hog or the gospel. I don't know how much. Just sprinkle a little bit. If you make jalapeno poppers, I always season the cream cheese. Once you do it, it's hard to go back to plain cream cheese, whether you smoke it or not. So I highly, highly recommend this. So this one is one that I would do in advance. I would make these the night before you go to the stadium, chill them in the fridge, and cook them at the game. And they're great. Everybody loves these. There's, I've never, I've literally never had one person said that sucks. I don't want it again. There's nothing sucky about these. All right, so those are, that's mixed up pretty good. So now, let's take some sausage. I'm gonna wipe the butter off this knife. This is a Texas beef sausage. So take any sausage you want, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Um, this is an all beef sausage, keel boss out of San Antonio, Texas, but that's not what's important. What's important is you just use whatever you like and just cut some little discs. So you're looking for that right there. Okay. This is very easy. You take bacon and you cut it in half, which I've already done. Got in a Ziploc bag uh, because flies. And you just make a little cup. So you wrap this half piece of bacon. See, I'm gonna go meat. Let's see here. And you just wrap it around the bottom of this sausage. And then you take a toothpick and you run through it. Make a cup. So I'm gonna make a few of these real quick. Uh, my recipe on my website says use thick cut bacon. I, you know, I go back and forth on that. Today we're using standard cut bacon because I find that standard cut bacon um, will cook and be done quicker than a thick cut bacon. So you can go with whatever you like. Uh, but I've kind of started going with uh, this regular cut bacon. So wrap it tight and then run your toothpick in that sausage at the end of it and all the way back out the other side so you've made this nice cup just like that. All right, now I'm gonna sit here and make you watch me make these all day long. In fact, I'm gonna call it good already. Okay, so now let's stuff them. So take your, take your stuffing mixture this is the least fun part, and stuff your cups. That's all you gotta do. Stuff them pretty good, fill them up, and that's gonna be an awesome, tasty bite. There's latitude with this, as in most things that I cook. You know, make the, you know, I always advocate make recipes your own. That one's coming apart a little bit. So if you like a different pepper, different seasoning, you wanna put different stuff inside, do it, put it on Instagram, tag Meat Church, and let me see what you're up to. So now what I would do is I put them on a rack. And I season just a little bit more, just a little bit across the top. You're gonna to get a pretty color when you do that, a little more barbecue flavor. And there you go. Super simple. I cook these at 350 on my Traeger for one hour. Um, depending what else you got going, I get asked a lot of questions about how do you cook multiple meats. Uh, if you're rocking a pork butt at 275, it's fine to put these on at 275. They're probably going to take, you know, an hour 20, hour 30 to cook, given that. So that's just something that you can uh, 
you know, that you can play with depending on what you've got going. But if you're cooking them by themselves, I would just let these rock one hour at 350, let them cool off, because this cream cheese mixture is gonna be like atomic hot, and then it's gonna be time to eat. So let me move that out of the way. We're gonna move on to our third. Now we've got some cooking in here already. Let me peep in. Woo, they're looking good. We'll come back to that because we got one more dish to make for you guys. Questions on that one before I move into um, before I move into my last one? Where do you buy your meats? Where do I buy my meats? Well, it's kind of not fair question because I have some meat partners. But to answer your question. Um, I'm fortunate to have, in Texas, we have great grocery stores around us. In Texas, I love HEB because I can go in the grocery store and I can get, I can get Wagyu beef one mile down the street um, from me, but I can get great cuts there. Um, I, I often recommend Costco. Costco makes amazing, you know, has amazing meat. No matter where you go, it's a tough question for me to answer because there's people from all over the world watching. The message is know where your meat comes from, know the story behind it, uh, know your rancher, know your butcher if possible. Sometimes that's not practical. Um, but you really want to know how your meat is treated. So like when it comes to beef, I like never ever beef, which is no hormones or antibiotics. That's what I believe in. It's what I want to feed my family. Some people don't believe in that. So it's kind of up to you, but know, know what type of meat you buy. When it comes to pork, buy reputable brands. I mentioned Prairie Fresh. Um, some people like Smithfield. Um, the kind of big reputable brands that churn a lot in grocery stores know those. Maybe you have a local farmer near you that you like and, and want to try. Um, you know, I definitely support local and small business, especially local farmers. So that's kind of a personal preference thing. That's it. All right. Last one. I can't wait to pull all this together here uh, in just a minute. And the flies are certainly extremely excited. Can you grab me that? Oh, I got I'll use this one. All right. Lots of stuff going on here with this one. This is the Traeger game day dip. And I'm going to admit, I had never made this until we made it today, and this stuff is money. So let's get going here. Um, all right, this recipe, TraegerGrills.com, the Traeger app. This is a surefire winner. If you just look at the ingredients I have here, cream cheese, mayonnaise, uh, Parmesan cheese, cheddar cheese, diced fresh jalapenos, scallions, bacon. This is going to be a winner uh, before I even put it together. So we're going to start out with two blocks of cream cheese, and these are these are softened. They've been sitting out here for a little bit. And then we're going to go with one cup of mayonnaise. Now, if you're on the Traeger website, this step can be done with a stand mixer. But I talked to my chef friend, Nicole, at, at Traeger, and I said, you know, I don't want to come out here looking like Martha Stewart. I got a reputation. We're in my outdoor kitchen, so I love a stand mixer. But until I can acquire my grandmother's stand, stand mixer, I'm going to go with this old trusty wooden spoon. But you need to mix the two blocks of cream cheese and the one cup of mayonnaise. You need to fold it together until it's smooth. So it certainly would be easier with a stand mixer. Uh, but you can't catch me with that right now. So mix this really thoroughly at least best you can. This doesn't have to be perfect because this is for demonstration purposes. I've already got one cooking, but we're gonna make it good enough. It actually feels pretty good. Soften your cream cheese. Uh, you could smoke your cream cheese. I wasn't gonna smoke them both, so I think that's good. It actually feels really good. You're gonna mix all your ingredients now after this, so this is gonna be great. This is eight pieces of bacon. I'm gonna reserve a hair. All right. We have six diced jalapenos. Adjust to your liking, but we're in Texas, so by God, we're going with all six. You might say it looks like a lot. Put some hair on your chest. All right, let's go with this Parmesan cheese. Look at all that cheddar cheese, beautiful color. Some scallions. I'm going to keep these jalapenos for later. My beautiful assistant, Don. A male beautiful assistant, Don. So let's mix it all up. This is thick. You know it's going to be good. What I say earlier, I ain't here to help you lose weight. I'm here to help you enjoy life. This, my friends, is a dip you can make at the Dallas Cowboy Games and not care if Tom Brady comes back and beats them in the last minute because you ate super good in the parking lot.
Or you could make this at Alabama, Florida this weekend when Alabama humbles Florida. I don't know, just saying. Make it wherever you want to make it. But look at that. Man, that looks good. You're going to put it in a cast iron skillet. This is a number five. Uh, the one I cooked was in a number six. So this might be a little much for this one, but we'll make it work. So put it in here till it's nice and smooth. Dude, this looks awesome. The smell's awesome. It's gonna be pretty hearty. Oh yeah, that's good. So it's gonna be a nice thick dip. We're gonna just kind of smooth it out here. Look how pretty that looks before we do anything. But folks, we're not done yet. All right, we need a topper for this. And I've already mixed that together for you. So what I've done here is I've got a half a stick of melted butter, one cup of panko breadcrumbs, and a half a cup of more Parmesan because you can never have too much cheese. So this is gonna be our topper. And I probably have a little more than I need for this number five skillet, so I'm just gonna thoroughly cover this, and if I've got leftover, uh, then I probably will reserve it, or hell, put it on here if you want, whatever. Look at that. So good. Make it nice and even. Oops. In the splatter zone. Here you go, on. Take these two. The less chance we have for flies out here, the better. All right, that's it. This is another easy one. 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, there's nothing in here. You're not having to like cook anything. You're warming it up. Um, the hotter you cook this, you could actually brown it. I'll tell you, since I've got the one cooking here, I've got rocking in this grill. I've got going 275, so I didn't have to have another grill off camera. I've got it going 275, so it's not going to show to be as brown as you'd like to make this. But I would, I would go 350, maybe and bump it up 375 at the end to try to brown the top. You could even hit it with a torch if you really want to. If browning those that panko is important to you. Not that it's that big of a deal, but buttery, cheesy panko is amazing. That's gonna give this dish the crunch element you're looking for, and that's gonna be a game changer in this, so it's not just a good creamy dip. I'm a dip fanatic, um, and when Nicole brought this up to make this, I told you I'd never made it, and I was like, hell yeah, we're gonna make that. That looks amazing. So here we go with this one. I'm just gonna set this one aside, to be honest with you. And I'm gonna start pulling out some stuff that I've got in here so that it can start to cool down a little bit because I need to eat it. Really good question. People asking about the smoked cream cheese. Let me pull this stuff out and I'll answer that question. So funny enough, uh, we were going to make the smoked cream cheese video. And we didn't actually put, we didn't actually put it on anything at first. And that was a big mistake. Um, the cream cheese would just fall through, will just fall through the grate if you don't put it on something. Fortunately, that started to brown just a little bit. Uh, it's not as brown as I'd like it, but it's obviously done. I'm gonna dress it up a little bit. Um, we're gonna put some jalapeno and, uh, and some, some bacon on top of that. But, so let me talk about the cream cheese a little further. Like I said, the very first time that we made it, we seasoned the cream cheese with the gospel, or, or holy voodoo, I can't remember, and we put it directly on the grate of this Traeger Ranger right here, and I came back in like 30 minutes and the cream cheese had fallen through. So not all cooks are, are, uh, are Instagram worthy, I'll just say that. But what we do is we either put it in a little skillet or you can just put it on a piece of heavy duty aluminum foil. I spray it with a little cooking spray. And it's super easy. Um, if you watch the YouTube video that we put out recently, you'll see that we, um, uh, we season couple, you know, we season with voodoo, we season our holy gospel, we topped it with pepper jelly. Um, sometimes people score it to make it look pretty. We, we made ours look like footballs. Um, that wasn't really necessary, but the ones we use today, we just seasoned them and put them, honestly, we just put them straight on. So I reserved a little of that bacon just to uh, add a little contrast pop. You eat with your eyes first. I say that in every Traeger Kitchen Live. So give your eyes a little bit of rest from the complete like light color and break it up a little bit. And I'm gonna dress it up with some, uh, some jalapeno on top so it'll look super pretty. 
good question. On the pig shots, do, does the bacon get crispy? Um, it does not really get crispy. You're not, you know, you're not frying bacon. So I'm not looking for it to get crispy. I mean, when I feel this, no, it's not crispy. Um, that's a, that's a delicate balance to be honest with you, you know, trying to get, I, I got asked that earlier on something else that we made. That's like I said, that's a delicate balance. Um, trying to obtain crispy when you're cooking something like this, you're smoking this bacon. Uh, a lot of people like to cook bacon on their Traeger for breakfast and they'll put it on a wire rack and cook it at a higher temperature. So we're not, if you go too high temperature with this, you see some of these started to pop. Some of these are kind of coming apart. If I went too hot, these things would just kind of explode and be atomic. So um, no, we didn't go that far with this. Is the sausage on it cooked or raw? That, a great question. The sausage, is it cooked or raw? Most sausages you buy in the store are already cooked. You're simply just smoking them or reheating them. So that was actually already cooked. So you could be using like kielbasa or whatever the heck you want. The question was, could you smoke, could you, um, could you preserve the cream cheese? Could you chill it, refrigerate it, save it? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'd be comfortable keeping it just like any other leftovers for four or five days. I probably wouldn't go beyond that. I don't technically know how long it will hold, but I can tell you that in my house, cream cheese wouldn't make it four or five days. So, um, no problem smoking it, chilling it, taking it to the game or something like that. But I mean, it wouldn't last in my house longer than a couple days anyway. It's addictive. All right, let's do this pork. Like that. I'm going to I'm going to kind of move this out of the way while I work on the pork. All right, so I've got my finished pork uh, in a Cambro, which is basically a warm cooler down here off to the side. I'm going to pull it out and kind of show you what I would do with that. So I'm using, these are cotton string gloves that I get at Harbor Freight. It's literally the only item worth purchasing at Harbor Freight. Uh, and then I just put nitrile gloves over the top of it. So this acts as my insulated glove. I don't like using grilling gloves. This will allow me to feel what I'm doing while also holding hot things. So I could grab this hot rack. Uh, you gotta be careful, that's a little hot, but that's what that's for. All right, let me grab this pork. Okay. All right, I have not opened this whatsoever. But you can see right off the bat, I have a hole, two holes in here where I was probing it. And I can tell by how heavy this is, it has a ton of juice in it. Basically no juice when I went to wrap it other than what I poured in it, which was just, uh, I don't know, not very much and now when you look at it you can see this pan is completely filled with jus and so let's go back to the question do you inject well look at all that moisture this thing is sitting in all this moisture so I don't think it's needed people inject in competition because it's one bite barbecue and everybody's doing it and they're making their meats taste crazy I'm not teaching you to make competition barbecue because it's not what you need to make at home to be honest with you but it, it may be a little difficult for you to see this bark. The bark still looks really good, but again, when you're in foil, it's somewhat steaming. I obviously had a couple holes in the top of this, which will help some of that steam come out so it's not as bad, um, but that can make the bark a little wet. But as I touch it, that bark's not coming off. By the way, anytime you cook a meat, pork butt, brisket, whatever, and if you wrap in foil, and if the bark is loose, you could remove the foil, set this in your Traeger for 10, 15 minutes, and that bark will come back. So. Um, foil is fine. But anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab this bone and when you can have a clean bone pull like that, um, you obviously know that it's done. And I'm not going to pull all of this for you. I'm going to pull just a little bit of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in this pan here. Let's try to turn it this way and man, it's fly central all of a sudden. So I told you earlier, the money muscle. So that's right here. And look, if I really, really what I would love to do is pour all of this shoe into a fat separator and then I'd get rid of the fat and I would pour the good juice back into this pan 
Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to spend that much time doing this today. We've got about 10 minutes left. But I'm going to grab this money muscle. Watch this. I'm going to stick my thumb in there. And I'm going to just pull that thing right off. That, my friends, is where it's at. The other great meat I told you about, this horn meat, this right here where I pulled the bone out. That meat right there is super good. This right here, I love this. And so I'll sit here and I'll just kind of pull this. You know, there's your pro tip. That meat right around that bone is really, really good. You guys like a bone-in ribeye? So, you know, any of this tube meat, these tubes and this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a big tube. See that right there? That's super good stuff. But let's pull some off the top here. I mean, I'm showing you again, kind of the anatomy uh, of a pork butt. So I'm just using my fingers. This has been sitting for a couple hours resting in this warm cooler. When you pull this off here, look at the smoke from that pellet. So that smoke ring right there, if, if it's hard to see, is about yay big, about almost half an inch. So super heavy smoke that's gonna be thrown down off that Meat Church pellet blend. I'm a huge fan of, I think you're gonna love it. Just kind of pull that apart. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna attempt to turn this over and show you the bacon that I talked about, but right here where that fat layer was, if you kind of pull that back, okay, right here. This meat right here that I'm pulling away, that right there. Whew. Let me tell you something. Son, that. That's more tender than your mother's love right there. So right here, you gotta be super careful. There's barely any fat right there. And kind of push that fat away. Now you know why I didn't trim it away, because right there, look at that meat. That is money. So some people just jump in and they just start pulling all their pork and they mash it all together. That's fine if you're feeding a bunch of people. But if you're trying to enjoy something for yourself, I just showed you where to pull the best pieces of meat. But what I really want to do, ultimately, is I want to get... I like that bark right there, right? I want those crispy bits in there, that pink meat from all the smoke. I want a bunch of that in there. Uh, here's, some, here's some of that meat from around the bone. I'm gonna pull that back over here. And I'm gonna put a bunch of the jus in here and we're gonna make sandwiches. So get you some of that bark. There are more flies here than at an Auburn game on Saturdays. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull, pour, pull a little. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this U in here. Like I said, I would love for y'all to separate that, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna pour that directly in there. Set this off to the side. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut up this, uh, this money muscle real quick. Man, let's bust out the big knife. I've been, I've been itching to do this. Get yourself a good sharp knife. <laughs> I think, I think maybe too big. Ridiculous. This is hot, so it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to cut. Maybe we won't use that knife. See if this one's sharper. Woo, it's just hot. This anything that's really hot is hard to cut without an electric knife. That's why competition guys use electric knives in competition. You'd mow right through this money muscle. So in any case, um, that's going to be like really really good. You see that smoke right there? We're going to go ahead and mix it in here. I mean, look look at that deep pink smoke ring right there. That is obviously crazy tender. I'm just like with no effort, just falling right apart. So we've got some like super good juicy pulled pork without injecting it. Very simple, straightforward. Everyone would love that. Okay. So let's uh, let's plate up some stuff here. The question was, do I use the super smoke? That's a great question. Anytime I'm cooking at 225 or below, which is when the super smoke function is available, yes, I um, I use the super smoke. I I like smoke. Like I'm I'm all about maximum smoke. If that makes any sense. So if I'm cooking low, 
like let's say I've got all day and I'm not in any sort of hurry uh, to make this pulled pork. Well, then I'll start it out at 225 super smoke for a long time. If I've got something on my schedule and I've got to be done quicker, then I won't do it. But anytime I can go low and I can go super smoke, absolutely. What's your favorite Traeger grill? What's my favorite Traeger grill? Well, every time y'all watch me, I'm on this Timberline 1300. Um, but man, I, I love an Ironwood. Uh, I love the Ranger. It just, I'm, I'm the big believer in different tools for different circumstances. So um, that's, that's a tough question for me to answer, but uh, I've never had one single issue with the Timberline, so that's one reason I love it. But I love the Ironwood as well. It's a little more affordable price point, and it's a great grill. So tough question for me to answer. Favorite tailgating food? Favorite tailgating food. I feel like this is a loaded question by one of my friends, potentially. Uh, I just released a video last week, Wednesday, on the Meat Church YouTube channel called Texas Twinkies. I think that is an amazing um, tailgate food but usually when I go to a tailgate I'll make a big cut like a brisket or a pork butt like this and I will I will have that as my main meat I do tons of wings because you can you can do wings a bunch of different ways uh, I, I'll season all my wings with holy voodoo normally and then um, I'll smoke them or I'll, I'll grill them hot actually on a Traeger at like 400 degrees 450 and then I'll toss them in various sauces so I usually will do that at a tailgate so I got a lot of options for different different things um you know depending on what i'm doing so a lot of wings this would be a great meat and this is going to be a great tailgate meal right here so this may be what i do um for the first game coming up we'll see any new meat church merch dropping soon another really good question uh we do have a fall collection coming up soon isn't that right travis so we will, we will have a bunch of stuff coming in the fall. I'm topping this with slaw, by the way. This is something I love. I grew up on it. You might not like slaw. Cut it if you want. I like it. So I'm going with it. I'm going with the Traeger Sweet and Heat across the top. I'll tell you, you know, sauce, is, and, I, sauce and I have an, amazing, or an interesting relationship. In Texas, we say good barbecue doesn't need sauce, but I freaking love barbecue sauce. And I was definitely raised on this. So this is something that I love for show. So we're just making some sandwiches here. Whew. Man, that all looks good. Let's bring in some stuff to go with it. Throw down some, uh, some bells some pita chips for the dip. Um, man, look at that. Got a minute to spare and we just made a feast. Every single thing that we made is something that I expect you guys will make uh, for Traeger game day. Whether you're making the burger challenge this week or not, I fully expect you guys uh, to make these things. So what questions do we have before? I'm gonna give this a second to cool and I'm about to jump in and eat. What makes the meat church pellet separate? Great question. Again, going back to the beginning, this is a story of my life. I grew up on Hickory, moved to, you know, in Alabama and Tennessee, moved to Texas where it's all cooked with oak. Traeger doesn't sell oak pellets, so this is the only way you can get oak. Uh, and I think this is a perfect blend. It's 100% hardwood. Uh, the results speak for themselves. You guys see the smoke that was thrown down on this stuff today. I've received nothing but 100% positive feedback so far, so I think you guys would love it. By the way, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Saturday at my store, 11 a.m., I'm going to have a pop-up surprise free class from myself in front of the store. Uh, it's an event around the pellet. We're going to be cooking on our Traeger grill uh, with our Meat Church pellet. So I'm going to be in my shop this Saturday at 11 a.m. A lot of you have talked about coming out, trying to catch me there. Um, I'll be there, so come out, grab the pellet, um, grab lots of pellets, and uh, get you know food while it lasts and, and a free class. So... What else we got? All right, let's give this stuff a shot. So uh, I know my friend Amanda at Traeger always loves when I take the super uncomfortable bite. So why wouldn't we take the super uncomfortable bite? Mm. 
I ain't mad at it. But we're not done. Stand by. Whew. Garlic Parmesan Parmesan pita chips. Let's get in here. Oh man, broke my chip. Somebody call the cardiologist. I'm coming in. Ooh. Probably should have let that cool off a couple more minutes. I think that my friends at Traeger just want to see me burn. Oh, it's so good. I actually thought that was going to be spicy with the amount of jalapenos we put in there. I can't even order medium hot wings at Hooters and I could handle that. That was really good. The, uh, dude, that jalapeno in there, we were talking about that earlier. We thought it was going to be hot. That is so good. Like, that's like, damn, that's going on the menu. And let's get in here on the pig shot. Don't forget to take the toothpick out or it's gonna be a super bad night for you, especially if your team loses. Hmm. So good. I've had so much cream cheese, I probably won't have a bowel movement for a week. Not so fat. Dude, so good, so good, so good. This has been so much fun. Calculator watch says it's 7.02 central time. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Man, that was good. Any more questions? That's it. Well, I'm getting the cane. I'm getting yanked off stage. I really hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I had a ton of fun. It was fun to be back with you guys. Mark your calendars uh, for Thursday, November 4th, a Thanksgiving extravaganza where numerous chefs are going to be coming to this kitchen uh, for an epic Thanksgiving feast. But two weeks from today, the next Traeger Kitchen Live, uh, Primal Gourmet is going to be awesome. This weekend, do not forget, hashtag Traeger Game Day. So if you take anything away from this, search that hashtag, post, you know, like I said, this week is, is burgers, make the ultimate burger, or make anything you saw here. Tag me in it. Please tag me, Church. I'm the guy running our socials, so I will see it. I'd love to interact with you. Um, we drop weekly YouTube videos every Wednesday morning. We're actually dropping two a week right now. We have a cocktail dropping every Friday. So go subscribe to the Meat Church YouTube channel. The best videos out there in outdoor cooking. Um, anyway, I mean, as you can tell from these flies, the food is amazing. So I really hope to see you guys making this stuff. Love to interact with you guys on social. Um, thank you all for coming out, and uh, I'll see you guys in November.